that's the only thing she's going to tell her right now. This exercise is called balance work. The dog has an ingrained sense of balance. So wherever Carla goes, she is going to hold these sheep with Carla. You can see she came around here. She's right behind them, making sure that they go to Carla. Oh, Carla changed direction. So that means Chris has to change direction, which she does very nicely, staying on the sheep to be in a position to bring a white sheep head. That the dog is in the perfect place to bring them to Carla. Carla is not saying a word to her. She's not telling her where to be, telling her where to go. This is what the dogs are born with. And what we do is take a nice young dog like this. Well done, Carla and Chris. Good morning, Floss Tube. It is Monday, May 14th, and we are on day 14 of Stitch Mania. Um, May halfway gone. Hard to believe it. Let's see. I'm Jan of Jan Hicks Creates, in case you don't know that, in case you're new to my channel. Um, let's see. It is a gray day. Not too chilly, but a little chilly here in Maryland. I'm okay with it. Um, I'll probably be inside most of the day, so what does it matter, right? Um, day 14 of Mania. For those of you that are only doing 15 only, you know, that are doing 15, the traditional 15 starts, um, you are almost done. For those of you that are doing 18 for 2018, you're not too far from the finish line. For those crazies of us that are doing 30 or 31 or more, yes, Julie, yes, Ginger, I am looking at you. Um, yeah, we've got a ways to go yet, but um, I'm still having a great time. I am loving starting all these new projects. Who knew? I think this is so much fun. Even just putting a few stitches in, um, having a blast. I know that there's some of you that are really enjoying my Stitch With Me videos. I thank you so much for, for joining me, for tagging along every day. Um, your comments are so sweet, just so entertaining. I just love that, that, you know, I feel like I'm rambling, that I don't know what to say, that I'm just being weird. Um, you guys like it. <laughs> Let's be weird together, right? Let's be happy, be bright, be me, yay, or be you, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm a little bit, um, I feel like I'm on high speed today. I have a lot I want to get through. I have a lot to get done today. Um, after being away for the weekend, there's always like, oh, got to get laundry done, got to get shopping done, you know, so I'm feel like I'm going in a bunch of different directions. I feel like I'm talking really fast and I'm not usually that fast of a talker. So I'm gonna... Bring it down a notch. Or try. And share with you what's been happening. Not gonna do a stitch with me today because I'm doing this one. Um, so I want to show you the starts that I had over the weekend up in Lancaster. There were some hiccups getting started, so they actually both kind of got started yesterday, but I had a lot of time to stitch yesterday with um, driving back down from Lancaster, and then pretty much the rest of the day was a chill, a chill time. Show you some progress on a couple of my other mania starts. You may remember that I'm doing kind of this incremental, trying to get five minutes every day on all of my previous starts. Some days are better than other than others. Some projects have gotten more attention than others, only because I'll get like halfway through my list and then have to stop. So um, there's some that there really isn't any progress to show, but the ones that I feel like there is progress, that's what I'm going to show you. Of course, I don't have any finishes or fully finished. Um, I do have some goodies to show you, some shopping and some um, very generous gifts from some friends. So let's get started. Um, where do I want to start? Oh, silly me. Um, so at the beginning of this video, I'm planning on doing some of the photos, putting some of the photos from the Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, had a great time at the Sheep, of course, um, surrounded by yarn and sheepy things. It was wonderful. I didn't buy any yarn. I bought some sangria. There is a winery that comes every year 
with um, flavored sangrias, not your typical. So one was, they call one love and one happiness. They name it love and happiness every year. So one of them was a black currant wine base. And the other one was a Chardonnay wine base. And then they um, add a variety of fruits to it. And it's, you can either buy a cup to wander around the, the festival to drink, or you can buy a jug. We had tried to buy a jug last year at the end of Sunday, and of course they were sold out. So the first thing we did <laughs> this year was go to their booth and buy a jug and then like hoofed it back out to the, to the Jeep. So all I bought was the sangria and a bag of kettle corn. <laughs> no yarn, don't need any more yarn. But I was tempted many, many times. Um, we took a bunch of pictures of sheep, of course. Um, Got some pictures of the Border Collies. They have a Border Collie show demonstration every year. If you ever get a chance, if you haven't, and you ever get a chance to see the Border Collies do their work, it is really fascinating. These dogs are born with the instinct to herd, and then the trainers hone that instinct. And those dogs are just, when you, when those sheep come out and they're in the field, those dogs are just shaken. They're just ready to take off after those sheep. It's really fascinating. Um, and the sheep, anytime they feel like anything's getting near them, they just move. It, it's just, it's just fascinating. Highly recommend it. I did do some video clips of those. I might, I might attach some of those at the end of this video at the beginning. I think I'll just put the pictures. Um... Other stuff that's been happening. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you already know this. If you follow Donna Ray, if you follow Misty or Deb and Liz of Country Stitchers, um, we've been talking about this a bit. What a wonderful week I've had visiting with f new friends. Friends that um, I feel like I've known them forever. So if you saw Donna, Donna Ray, Ray just put up a video um, I don't know whether it was this morning or yesterday, probably yesterday, um, where she talks about how she had to come up to Baltimore for another procedure. She stopped in, we met at the Stitching Post, which is my um, LNS. It's about a half hour drive from me. It's in a little town called Catonsville. It's been there for years. It was there when I first started stitching back in the, well, when I moved down here in 87, it was there. And I don't, I don't know how long before that, probably three or five years at least. So it's been there for a long time. Uh, they have a great inventory, um, a great staff, but the real joy was meeting Donna Ray. Um, Donna Ray, you are just as lovely in person as you are on your videos. Lovely, generous, just filled with joy. I don't know if you've ever had the experience where you meet someone and it feels like you've known them forever. And granted, we get to know each other through these videos. So, and like I said before, hopefully we're all coming across as ourselves. But, you know, there, there may be moments of awkwardness when you meet in person. You know, there's some adjustment. There wasn't any of that with Donna Ray. It was, it was literally like I was greeting an old friend that I just hadn't seen in a while. It was lovely. Um, I truly hope we get a chance to just spend more time together, sitting and stitching and talking and talking and talking. Um, it was the same with the ladies up in Pennsylvania. Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts, came down from State College, and um, Deb Eshelman and Liz Christopher of um, Country Stitchers both live in Lancaster. And so we met first at the um, their local store, Stitches Unlimited, it's a small store, but packed full of goodness. The owner was so generous to um, try and, and we at first thought we were going to film something there and she was very accommodating and um, they were closing and I, I hate having worked in a retail craft store. I know how important closing time is. So I didn't want to infringe on that, but um, we came away with a few goodies and I'll show you that mine in a little bit. Um, so first we shopped and it was a time of giggling and talking about the models and ooing and aahing over the way they stitched theirs as opposed to the way we stitched ours, that kind of thing. Helping each other pick out floss and fabric. I've never had that kind of experience, um, never had that opportunity.
excuse me, really. Well, just recently I've hooked up some stitchers here in, in the Baltimore area, but, oh goodness, excuse me. But so that was a real joy. Once we checked out, we headed to a coffee shop. And if you saw my little video, if you didn't see the little video that I did of us sitting and chatting, um, I put it up yesterday. Please go and see that. Um, I think it's great. It was a lot of fun. Um, there was a lot of laughter. We show the goodies that we got. Um, after we ended the video, we sat there for another hour, hour and a half, just chatting. It was wonderful. My husband was with me, Misty's boyfriend was with her, and they just sat at the table next to us doing their thing. They were so patient, so good to us with their time. Um, yeah, again, people that are in real life just as they are on their videos, just super sweet, super fun, that you just, I just felt an affinity, affinity with immediately. It was, it was wonderful. And again, we are going to do it again and we're going to have more time to just sit and talk and stitch. Um, yeah, I feel like I've made some forever friends in these ladies and I'm just, you know, when I first moved back here, so a little bit of a backstory, if you don't mind my rambling. Um, when we lived in Sarasota, for the first year, year and a half, I didn't work at the yarn store. So Mike and I were pretty much at home. We really didn't have any way to meet people because we were at home. And then I started working at a good yarn and of course started meeting people and becoming friends with the my fellow co-workers as well as the ladies that come in and knit. Um, so I had that kind of social outlet. Mike didn't. And um, as you know, he's a writer. He got to feel so housebound and um, claustrophobic almost that he started at the, the local mall, Sarasota Square Mall was about a mile from our house. He would walk down there every day in the morning and sit down there and, and um, write just so he felt like he was getting out of the house and he had some kind of social atmosphere. He'd sit in the food court, um, some kind of social atmosphere, but he was feeling pretty much shut in. So when we moved up here and the tables were kind of turned, he was worried that I would feel the same as he did. I am very much a homebody. I have no problem sitting here for days, stitching, knitting. Um, I talk to people online. You know, I, I just, I don't have that same worry. But he was happy when um, my friend Marnie and her husband moved into the apartment complex and we started working out every morning because he felt that was important for me to get that kind of socialization. You know, it was like, <laughs> have to socialize your children. Um, and you know, I, I do enjoy that, but I kind of laugh now because, so we go out to dinner with Marnie and her husband. We met it up at Sheep and Wool with a, a friend that we used to work with and we have dinner plans with her and her husband, or we're gonna make them once they get back, they're out on an RV trip met up. I talked the other day about hooking up via Facebook with another friend that we used to work with um, who's a stitcher and a knitter, the one that, that taught me to knit. And we've had dinner with her and her husband and you know those will continue in the future and I'm getting together with her and some other stitchers um, next weekend I believe. And then all of this happening with Donna Ray and with the, the ladies up in Pennsylvania and I'm just thinking uh, no worries about me getting socialization. I need some home time. <laughs> so lots of fun going on um let's see and i also got to spend time with my cousin pam in pennsylvania um i haven't seen her in a while in a few years so it was good to catch up with her and exchange lots of old stories and memories and catch up on where everybody is in the family and lots of hugs so that's always good i love lancaster and we will be going up again hopefully in the not too distant future um I have been watching a little bit of Floss too, but not a whole lot. Um, there's a few new ones that I've been watching. Um, Amber Michelle, I know she's not totally new. She might have started about the same time as I did. Um, she's a nutritionist, so um, a dietary nutritionist, so she shares some nutrition tips, which I, I always love to hear. Um, 
She's a fairly new stitcher, um, so she's really got lots of cute new projects. She's trying not to get caught up in, in all the mania, so she's trying to keep it um, fairly monogamous and, and not get overwhelmed. So I highly, she was, she was cute. She was um, very easy to watch, fun to watch. I recommend her. Victoria's Creative Crafts. Um, she's very bubbly, very kind. She is a, I don't know whether it's elementary school bus, but she's a school bus driver, so she has a lot of energy. She does some great projects. She's been stitching for a while. Um, she actually is one of the ones that took so much advantage of the Joanne's Floss sale. She had a receipt that was like over five feet long. <laughs> so she took a picture of herself with the receipt. It was taller than she was. It was funny. Um, one I just watched this morning, Stitching the High Notes. She is not new to YouTube at all. She has been a, um, I think mostly a knitting podcast person podcaster um, and she has gotten caught up in mania so the podcast I watched this morning which was probably from a day or two ago um, she's showing both her knitting and her stitch mania project she loves Satsuma Street so she has a couple of those she has some frosted pumpkin projects that she's going to be starting so um, she's another multi craftual person and is showing it all and she's again very bubble bubbly um, She's a seems like a very lovely soul and um, a fun personality, so I, I recommend her. Okay, let me get a drink. So, on to stitching. Um, let me first show you the projects I started over the weekend that you haven't had a chance to see yet. So, my two projects... Well, there were actually three projects. I was supposed to start Blackberry House. I don't remember which day. One of the days was Blackberry House by Plum Street Sampler. One of the days was Blessed Be by Brenda Gervais with her by Needle and Thread. And then the third day was supposed to be work on a whip, which would have been Grateful Hearts. Grateful Hearts I've just kind of shoved off the table because I didn't get to it. So, I started with um, Blackberry House. We all know it. Several people are doing it. Leslie Hurley is one of them. Love it. Um, I did not get the call for fabric. And if you saw, I posted on both Instagram and Stitch Mania. I started this in the RV on Saturday morning. And when I started working, this is aged pewter. The fabric is a 40 count vintage butter pecan. In the lighting in the RV, the aged pewter appeared to be blending totally into the fabric. Um, and so this is an interesting note. And I think there must be some psychological, we need, we need a psychologist to analyze this. I just had a few stitches in up here to start with. And then I had the skein laying on the fabric and I took a picture and I posted on Instagram, I need help. Should I continue with this or should I try and find something that doesn't blend in more? Because like I said, the light in the RV, it seemed to be blending in more. So I posted that question on both Stitch Mania and on Instagram. On Instagram, the first person to respond, which happened to be Misty, said that she thought we should go darker. That, that yeah, it wasn't showing up enough that I'd be happy. The first person, and I don't remember who it was, the first person to respond on Stitch Mania said, no, it kind of has a nice, nice faded look. I would go with that. On both of those platforms, I would say, not a whole lot of people, but maybe 10 more people responded on each one without any exceptions. Everybody following on Instagram agreed with Misty and said, go darker. We, did, we termed it Team Darker Floss. Everybody without exception on Stitch Mania agreed with the post, first poster and said, oh, leave it. It looks great. It looks like just it's just a little faded. I think that's very interesting. I don't know what the psychology is that's going on in there, but I just found it interesting that on both platforms, whatever the first person said, everybody else agreed with. I don't know what it means. I don't know whether it means anything. I just thought it was interesting. So anyways, Blackberry House, Plum Street Sampler, 
So I started up here. So I did just that first little piece of the little bunting up there and then that. Now the, um, the fiber that's called for here is actually Gentle Art Sampler Thread Black, or Gentle Art Sampler Thread Current. So I think it's a little bit more maybe purplier and darker. I had on hand um, Weeks Dye Works Tur Turkish Red. So there is quite a bit of a difference. This is a lot brighter. I will probably get the current. I don't know whether I'll take that out. Now that I look at it, it seems a lot different. I didn't think it looked that different last night. Lighting is everything, people. <laughs> I don't want to take it out. But it is a lot brighter than a lot of the other colors. So we'll see. But I probably will get some of the current because I think it's used to edge these little berries. And what I have here would be way too bright. So anyways, that is the start. Of Blackberry House. The other one I started was Blessed Be, Brenda Gervais. The house calls for roasted marshmallow and the window, the um, casing around the windows was Sandcastle. So I started, I got a, a chunk of the house done and I started using Sandcastle, and the skein of Sandcastle, I think it's Weeks Dye Works Sandcastle, the, sta sane of, the skein of Sandcastle that I have um, is much paler than what that appears in the picture. I mean, you can really see it in, in contrast with the roasted marshmallow, which is what the main part of the house is. So I decided to pull out, this is Weeks um, Mocha, so I decided to use that as the casings on the house and the, the um, lintel around the door, the door frame. So that is my start of Blessed Bee. I had to get new fabric for this. The fabric I had picked was a um, 30 count. The fabric called for was a 36 count. I was originally going to do over one on 30 count, but this pattern, um, most of it is over two but there are little tiny bees right here. These little specks are little tiny bees done over one. And I f figured if everything else is done over one, you aren't going to get the same effect if, as having these be so much smaller than the rest. So at Stitches Unlimited, I got um, the 36 count. And this is um, Zweigert's Platinum 36 count. Okay, so those are the two new starts that you haven't seen yet from the weekend that you didn't see in any of my Stitch With Me videos. So, I'm going to go back now. There's just, like I said, just a few of the previous ones that I put enough work in at those five minute bits to make it worth showing you. So the first one is the Linen and Threads Mystery Sampler. So again, there is what I have of that. And I did, I finished this band. This is the first band in the May part of the series. Very pleased with how that came out and how it's looking with the rest of the sampler. The second band in May, I'm gonna pull up a picture here, um, is a little bigger than that and I had to decide what colors I want to use. That is really part of the, when, you, when you're using multiple colors for something like this, it can become a real challenge choosing colors. I highly recommend, if you're, if you're a first timer for this kind of thing, and, and you don't want to use just a single color, a single color of course makes it super easy, you don't have to think at all. But if you don't want to use a single color, just choose two or three colors don't overwhelm yourself with picking. So, you know, I mentioned five minutes every day on all the different projects. One of the reasons that, um, one of the times I didn't do five minutes on all the different projects is because the one day, once I finished the first band, I was working on picking colors for this band. And I probably spent a half hour just trying to decide what colors to use. So, you know, they're one a chuck of my time. So this is the second part of May. So you can see there's a whole lot of different things going on here. 
and I don't really remember now <laughs> exactly what I'm going to use where. I think it'll come back to me as I start it, but I'm going to use 931 and 932 and then and that will be one of the I think that's the one with the kind of the cue with the thing coming down in the middle and then the other one is more like a let me pull that up again it's all coming back to me now okay so let's see if I can so this one here like there's a second line across the top there. Do you see that? That's going to be the 931, the darker blue. And these little swirls are going to be 931. And that center piece is going to be 931. And then 932, the lighter blue, I'm going to use these to be these offshoots here and these little pieces down here. Then on the next, the other one, we have these kind of leafy things with a flower in the middle and this kind of doodad going up here. So... I'm going to use greens. This is 3052 and 471 for the greenery. And then I'm going to make that flower in the middle, the purple. And this is 3041. So that is the plan for that one as I get my additional five minutes a day in on that. So that's that. The other one I made some progress on, Midsummer Garden. XG Design sells this. The designer is um, Vintage Tulip Designs. So I started up here and I'm still just working up there. But I got a little bit more of the flowers done, a little bit more of the vine. And those colors are showing pretty true to color. And it, this is gorgeous. I still love everything about this. I think I might jump down. There's a little motif right here. I might jump down and just play with that just to get something different in. Brick House Sampler. Another Brenda Gervais. This one is over one. So I have a little bit of the house done and the door, a couple windows. This is going to be stunning when it's done, but it's not anything that's going to be done quickly. Um, I don't know what, that, what I showed you of this. December, cross, cross, I, yeah, this guy. You all know this. Working on the M. I don't know how much artists you've seen. So the tree, and I started on placing the little lights over here. And then, this one popped up in the middle of everything. Sally Spencer. Sampler, there's quite a few people working on this, and I could not resist. So, I'm bringing up my floss tube notes again. Um, so, I got the fabric for this when I was visiting with Donna Ray up in the stitch up at the stitching post. This is um, a piece of Confederate gray by shoot, it's weeks. I will have to look that up and put it in there because it is not right at the top of my brain, but I'm sure you guys know Confederate Gray. Lakeside? No, it's not Lakeside. Anyways, 36 count, Confederate Gray, absolutely scrumptious, scrumptious color of fabric. I love this. I love it. I will be using Confederate Gray a lot. So this is what I've started. I've totally changed the colors. This is what I've started trying to substitute in as many Victorian motto as I can. So I am working just up here in the corner. So not a whole lot of it done, but I got it started. All right, so that's what I have for you in relation to mania. Goodies. So Oh, I did want to say, so today's start for Stitch Mania is Moments in Chalk. I actually forgot to pull that out. Um, you've seen it before. I'm not going to worry about it. But that's what I'll start today. Tomorrow I'll be back to my Stitch With Me's. So tomorrow you will see progress on Moments in Chalk and whatever I'm starting tomorrow, which I don't know. 
off the top of my head. <laughs> All right, goodies. So, the generosity of friends. We all know it. The, this, this community is amazing. Donna Ray brought me a gorgeous little piece of, um, this is Stars Hollow 36 Count. I think she knows me. 36 Count Linen, R&R Productions. Gorgeous neutral fabric. I don't know what yet, but it's probably not going to take me very long to put something on this. She also brought me some of the pretty trims, the Chanel. There's ribbon in here. Buttons. I'm sure this is the Lady Dots. I don't think R&R. &R. Does R&R &R die, Donna Ray? Are these R&Rs or are they Lady Dots? Let me know that. I'm not sure. A little honey beeswax leaf nice 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 and look at these whether you can see the thumb there that's her husband's thumb how about these pictures these are all postcards that donna ray has created from pictures she's taken and on the back she kind of has a description of um, what we're seeing in the photo. I think these are stunning. I love the way the light glows through their bodies. Just, mm, mm, mm. there you go. Queen Bee, surrounded by her minions. I know that's not what they're called, but speaking of which, um, Donna Ray's video from yesterday, fascinating look at what happens when bees swarm. I don't want to keep bees. I have no desire to get into that. Of course I can, I'm in an apartment. Could you see if I said, hey, you mind if I start a beehive out back? <laughs> yeah. Um, I just find it fascinating though. So Donna Ray, keep it up. I love learning about the bees. Awesome. And then I got some goodies from um, Liz and Deb, Lancaster themed goodies. Now, um, let's see. Some of them are gone. I know we're not supposed to use them until we can show, but you know, rule breaker. So hard pretzels, um, Mike took those with him to work. Um, some waffle cones, which we um, snacked on with, well, I didn't, I'm gluten-free, so I can't eat that stuff. But my um, husband and my cousin snacked on those. They brought me this interesting, I've never seen anything like this. It's like a little pillow and they've put some gorgeous little counting pins in it with a needle threader. How pretty is that? I love the colors in this. So pretty. And some, let's see, beeswax hand cream. I've never used anything like this. Again, wonderful light scent. Um, I, I don't know, is this supposed to be okay to use when you're stitching? Lord knows I can use it because I, I get dry patches. So, and they also brought some freezer jam, which is in my refrigerator. I had some on my um, toast for breakfast this morning. Yum, yum. Thank you so much, ladies. And the bag it was in. Un momentito. How pretty is that? Is that not gorgeous? I just think this is such a pretty bag. So yes, this is going to hold Stitch Mania projects. Yay. Okay, other goodies. These are of the either giveaway variety or um, stuff I bought. Mike was funny. Whenever we were showing our purchases at um, in the video that we did yesterday when we were together, he made the comment that... Um, Yep, it's going to come off of her allowance for next month. And I was like, I don't think so, Tim. It's Mother's Day. I'm treating myself. <laughs> Do you ever... I don't think so, Tim. We use a lot of um, TV show and, and video or and movie lines in our everyday life. Do you guys do that? I don't think so, Tim. is from Tim the Toolman Taylor. My boys used to watch that show all the time. 
and yes, yeah, some of those lines become part of our daily life. That and like SpongeBob, um, when the narrator would say three years later, anytime Mike and I are waiting anywhere, that line comes out. Yeah. All right, so in no particular order, the goodies I've either um, won as a giveaway or I have purchased or, yeah. Okay, first and foremost, this I won. Um, this was the giveaway by from Ginger, GG, GG in Stitches. Um, I love me some Jardin Privé. I don't know whether that's how you say that. Jardin Privé, I don't know how you say it. So this is actually part of a bigger piece. This is this part right in here. Guess I'll have to find the other pieces. Look how pretty that is. God, that's gorgeous. And it is 475 by 104 on 40 count. So it's not a little piece, but oh my God, I've got to do all that. So thank you so much, Ginger. This is, um, look at that house. Look how pretty. This is totally me. Oh, Thank you, Ginger. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so this is funny. Got a couple of skeins of Brethren Blue because we all know how hard it is to find and I need it for Grateful Hearts to finish that up. I think Saturday afternoon, not long after I bought this, I got this at Stitches Unlimited up in Lancaster, I got a call from the Stitching Post that the order that I had made of Brethren Blue like at least two months ago was in. I'm gonna have plenty of Brethren Blue, so if anybody needs a skein, let me know. Deck the Halls, have my eye on this. This is the one with all of their, um, their strawberry patterns. And there's probably, there's a, some of these that I'm not, I wouldn't even put into strawberries. I just want to have them as smalls. But I've been, I've been wanting this, and not that it's been out for a long time. It just came out at, at market, right? But I wanted to make sure I got that before it disappeared or became hard to find. Um, other ones I got at um, Stitches Unlimited, Oh Whale. I mentioned before I wanted this one. It's the one that um, my, my son says this all the time, texts it to me all the time, um, had to have it. So that one, Two Silver Creek, this one, you saw me read it in the video yesterday to my husband. So that one and that one. And yeah, and those of you that, is, that saw our video yesterday, you've seen these. This is all stashed from Stitches Unlimited. This is from the Stitching Post. I got this while I wa was um, with Donna Ray up there. So this is this little series by Heart and Hand. Um, Bird in the Hand, this is spring, so there's, you know, all the different seasons. And um, shoot, I was going to look up the saying and I forget. Um, so you can stitch these all as one piece and then there's a saying that goes along the bottom that you can download from their website that says something about walking gently on the earth. I don't remember what it all says. I'll put it down below. So um, this comes with a little sunflower charm, which goes right up there. And it just looks, they, they have it stitched. Not all the pieces are out. I think summer's coming out in June. I don't know whether, I think summer's the last one. And this is the only one I have. This is kind of a placeholder, so I remember to get the other ones. Um, they have it stitched, a sample like that's incomplete hanging on the wall at the stitching post, and it just looks so cute. And of course, I love seasonal series types of things, so how to get that. I got my um, Victorian Motto Sampler Threads, and I don't think most of you have seen these, but I'll show mine. We might have some different colors. I know one of the one of the sets. I get both the limited edition set and the primitive set, and I know one of them is can be different. So, vintage crochet, primitive carnation. These are showing a little bit paler than they are in real life. I can't even read that. What's that say? Aqua green. Yeah, pretty. 
light is kind of changing constantly because of my face and my hair. Taupe lace, that's a pretty one. This is gorgeous. Prim aqua, and I don't know whether you can see. Look at the variegation in that, isn't that pretty? And then pressed rose petals. Oh, look at that, look how pretty that is. Gosh. So that's the prim ones. And then the limited edition. Americana bronze. So that's pretty that's pretty a single color and you can see 167 DMC. Special orchid. Other people have said she does a great job with purples and she really does. Put it against my blue shirt so you can kind of see it better. Southern mint. She does a lot of green too. This is really pretty. So this is, that doesn't have a DMC conversion. Mellow Orange. This is $38.54. Trying to get it so there's not as much of a glare from the light. Kentucky Sky. And it seems to me this had some variation. I don't know whether you'll be able to see it. It's very subtle. Yeah, this has no DMC conversion, so it must have variegation to it. It's gorgeous. It's a beautiful blue. Oh, scrumptious. And then sampler greenery. And this, this has some great variegation. Again, there's no DMC conversion because there's so much variegation to it. Look at that. Can you see that? How it's going from that brighter to the more soft. Oh, gorgeous. So those are this month's um, May's. I have to think again. Um, Victorian motto threads. And then I have um, this is a Pass the Stash from Michelle Garrett, Bendy Stitchy. Um, love, 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 love it. And um, she finished stitching it and she offered it to me. She's we're keeping gonna keep track here of um, who all it has been to. So if once I get it stitched, if somebody else would like it, you will let me know. Um, the rest of the stuff, I had been up to the stitching post last week as well, the previous week, um, visiting, meeting up with um, some of the Baltimore stitchers that I've met up with, um, that I've reconnected with, Trish, my friend, being one of them. And so I have some purchases from that trip too, one of which is, of course, an aqua fabric. This is, oh, look how pretty that is. This is Silk Weaver, 32 count Meadow Mist. Look how pretty that is. Oh. I want all the aqua fabrics. Just, just send them all to me. God, that's so pretty. Don't know what I'll do with it. Immaterial. Got the second one of the laundry series. Loads of fun. I'm gonna wait until I have all of those to stitch them. I really like how she finishes it though. I think I'll probably do something very similar to that. And greater, actually, these next two are from Julie. This was my first order. Did I tell look at this? This sounds really familiar. It's in my little folder, so I don't think I've told you. I got um, the Sally Spencer sampler and greater, and then the Land of Liberty. Sweet Land of Liberty book. So, lots of lots and lots of goodies. Now, next on the agenda, we're almost done guys, hang in there. I wanted to talk a little bit. Um, so like I said, I don't have any FFOs, but, and I hope the ladies show them on their video, but I wanted to talk a little bit here about what I did for them because I didn't get a chance to tell them um, what it is that I made for them. So, I wanted to take something special, of course, and um, I got to thinking of some old quilt squares that had been handed down to me from my mother's stash, and I think where she got them was actually from my grandmother's neighbor. 
Now, she was a huge quilter. When she died, I think her daughters were not that crafty. Her daughters were friends with my mother. And I think, like, she passed, my, my mother ended up with, I have two quilt tops of hers that have never been finished, and I really need to find somebody to finish those into quilts. Um, and I'll show those on some other video. I don't even know what size they are, and I believe they're fully finished quilt tops, but they need to be actually made into quilts. So she got those. She got a knitted, like a knitted blanket afghan type of thing where you knit squares and then you embroider roses on top. So what we ended up with in a bag was a bunch of the knit squares, they're like a cream color, and then um, some of the squares were finished with the embroidery. Some, there were a lot that weren't, didn't have the pattern, but had all the, the yarn for it. Um, I actually ended up passing that to Goodwill because I would never have done anything with it. Um, and then I ended up with a bag filled with all these little nine square what do you call these quilt blocks patches so just all kinds of different scraps and also in that bag and again it's a bag I've been toting around for years also in that bag so there was even some squares already cut out ready to be made into the next nine squares like that and then a ton of these already cut out and I mean there's I mean talk about vintage fabric so this is probably fabric from the 40s and 50s eh, she probably died in the when did Mrs. Whitlatch die she probably died in the 70s maybe the 80s um, yeah, she's been gone a while. I don't know whether she was older than my grandmother. I don't remember. But anyways, um, old fabric. Just all kinds of different patterns. And some of these I'm going to try and, and use to finish some smalls. Um, yeah, some of them are, like, stitched down the middle. What do you do with these? Um... I don't even know. Stitch down the middle so they would fold open so you see the front. I mean, why? It's not like you can use them in a quilt like this. I don't know what you do with them. There's just a few of these. So, yeah. If anybody has a clue just to inform me, let me know. But anyways, I got to thinking about these things that have been sitting here that I've been toting all over the country. And it struck me that I could make them something special with my little quilt blocks. So, off to Pinterest I went and I found an inspiration piece. And this is what I came up with. It's kind of blown out because the picture itself, there was too much light when I took the picture. Um, so, one for each of the ladies. I cut, so I had a, a one of the blocks and then a plain piece of fabric that I cut out into these petals. And then I sewed, hand sewed, the petals together. And then I stitched all of them down. There's a that you can't see. Um, <laughs> just had a little YouTube notification come in. Um, I cut out a little piece of felt and stitched the petals onto the felt and then um, stitch down the button. These, This is an old button of my grandmother's. I have a her button. I have her button bin. So, found a button in there and stitched that down. And then stem is rickrack and just glued it all down. Did a little border at the top and the bottom of these frames I found. So I'm, I'm really pleased with how they turned out. I hope the ladies like them. Just a little something from me. 
with something from my stash that I've had for a while and I'm, I'm happy that I could use what I had to make hopefully something special for my friends. So, wait, let me get my phone again. Let me make sure, I think that was everything. We're at 48 minutes, so let's hope so, right? Shut this lady up already. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, guys, once I get the photos in and maybe a little clip of, uh, of Border Collies doing their thing, this will be quite long enough. Like I said, I will be back tomorrow with another stitch with me. I plan on doing them every day as long as nothing gets in the way for the rest of the month. And it'll be into June as, as well. Um, one of the comments I got said that they're going to miss me when I stop doing these. So I thought that was very sweet. You guys are just, you guys are just so nice. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed seeing any everything. If you have any questions, please let me know. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. Oh, and a reminder, um, my 1,000 subscriber, Share the Love, is um, will close the end of business on Wednesday. So that is the 16th, close of business Wednesday. Please be sure, if you haven't yet, to um, watch the video and comment. Do not say giveaway. Um, do not say winner. Do not say any of that. Just um, comment, like I said in the video. And um, I'll do the drawing probably the next morning and do a short video or uh, I don't think I'll do it with my stitch with me. I'll do a separate little video announcing the winner for that. So anyway, winners for that because stitcher and knitter. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. I will see you manana. Bye-bye.